Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And there's a very interesting question which comes to our mind sometimes. Once a lady had asked me, is there any way by which the Navamsha chart, which is the D9 chart, can overpower the D1 chart? Which means, can it happen any time for anybody that the results of the D1 chart comes after what the D9 says? Or does it happen that the D1 is saying something and the D9 is contradicting that and the D9 wins, all right? So there is unfortunately uh, no clear answer. I mean, there are certain things which are said in the classics, but there is no clear yes, no, or any principle-based answer, okay? But yeah, there are certain things which are said regarding this. And in fact, this holds true for everybody. To, and now, to the extent you have these things in your horoscope, to that extent, you will see that the Navamsha chart is, uh, in English, overpowering the Lagna chart, okay? So now, this does not mean by any by any consideration that the d1 chart is not going to give results okay no 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 never 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 ever do that mistake the d1 chart will always be there because that is the chart of your body and whatever happens to you depends uh, on a mental or spiritual or physical level but at the end of the day it has to come to your body right so suppose you get a good, suppose something good is happening to you or is going to happen, then either somebody has to send you a mail and say, oh, this good thing is happening or somebody will message you in WhatsApp or Facebook or you know, uh, in your mobile, somebody will call you and say, so you have to hear that good news through your own ears and then you can understand it in the brain. Okay. So... Uh, it doesn't happen that the the D1 chart becomes useless or there, there can be any situation where the Navamsha will unanimously dictate events, okay? And neither does the other way around happens, which means never ever will it happen that only the D1 is saying and only that happens. No, 90% of the times it is a merger of both of them. Okay, so first you check the D1 chart, then you check the D9 chart. That, uh, that is the uh, ultimate procedure because what ultimately happens is based on the D1 physically. And then to what extent is it backed by your karma in a good or in a bad, both ways, okay, for that particular event of life will have to be judged from the Navamsha, okay? So therefore you will see uh, people have many Raj Yogas, Mahapurush Yogas, so many Yogas they have. And then they will say that, oh, uh, astrology doesn't work. No, it's not like that. The Mahapurush Yogas or Raj Yogas that you have in your Lakra chart, you must see the strength of those planets in the D9, the Navamsha chart. Only then you can understand what is actually the power of those yogas to manifest externally? Okay, so these are external manifestations. Remember, and Mahapurush yogas have to be judged only from the Lagna chart, not from the Navamsha chart. Yes, that is very clear. There is no ambiguity on that. Okay, yes, now of course, if you have a Mahapurush yoga in the Lagna chart and that same planet also has a Raj yoga or some other great yoga in the Navamsha then that's fine. That increases the power of the planet, of course. But you cannot say that a planet has, suppose your Saturn is in 10,000th in Aquarius. And so that does not mean in the Lagna chart, it will give you the results as if it is in a Mahapurush Yoga. Okay, so uh, you cannot drag Navamsa placements to the Lagna chart. Okay, you can't do that. But today we are going to discuss certain combinations or certain placements uh, within the uh, purview of astrology from both D1 and D9, okay, by which you can get an idea that, okay, maybe 
my navamsha is going to have more say in my life than my d1 chart okay which in no way means that my d1 doesn't have any say but when there is a contradiction then maybe we focus more on the navamsha okay if you have these placements in both the d1 and the d9 all right so there you go as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who you know have these placements all right and yes if you want a consultation from me then you can always go to my website down in the description section what is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so what is the uh, first indicator that your navamsha chart is more powerful than the lagna chart to give specific results so the first thing you check is what is the situation of the lagna lord of your lagna chart so suppose you are a leo ascendant or oh, no, not leo leo is a bad example for this uh yes let's take virgo ascendant <laughs> Virgo ascendant. So in the Lagna chart, you are a Virgo rising. Okay, you are Virgo Lagna. All right. So then you check in your Lagna chart where is this Mercury who is the Lord of Virgo, your Lagna Lord of your D1 Rashi ascendant chart placed in your Lagna chart. Okay. So if Mercury is placed in the ascendant itself in Virgo in the right degrees, then it is exalted, or maybe it's in Multrico. So then that is a very great placement for Marky. So then you check the next stages. You check where is this Mercury, the Lagna Lord of your D1 chart placed in Navamsha. You check it. So where is that Mercury placed? Is Mercury in a good dignity, in a good house? Or is it conjunct malefics or it is in a Dustana? especially the eighth house of the Navamsha. Okay. Now, that is the first thing you do. So you have seen these two things. Okay. Then what you do is the next thing is you judge the Navamsha chart. Okay. Now you see where is the Lagna Lord of the Navamsha. So suppose you are of any Lagna. Okay. Let's take the example, suppose you are Sagittarius Lagna, okay, in the Navamsha, for example. And irrespective of any ascendant in the birth chart, in your Lagna chart, okay, you are Navamsha, Lagna is Sagittarius, Thanu. Then, where is your Jupiter placed in the Navamsha chart? In your Navamsha, okay. And then you also check where is this Jupiter placed in your Lagna chart, okay. So these two planets are the most prominent planets which will decide what will happen, which will override whom. Okay. So now if you see that um, the placement of Mercury, which was your supposed uh, Virgo Lagna Lord in your Lagna chart, suppose Mercury is very well placed in the Lagna chart, but it is not that well placed in the D9 chart. Okay, then you know that when it comes to your Lagna chart, most of the activities and the events that will happen, you have more free will regarding those areas because now Mercury is stronger in the Lagna than in the Navamsha. Okay, but what does the placement of Jupiter indicate as the Navamsha Lagna Lord? Jupiter indicates so now, suppose let's take an example Jupiter in your Navamsha chart is very well placed in your Navamsha chart, okay? And this means whatever destiny you have, whatever is there in your karmic account, you will be able to harness them very properly, okay? So it's like saying you are not wasting what is there. Have you seen people born in very rich families or in very greatly elevated spiritual or religious families sometimes with parents who are very knowledgeable very wealthy very popular sometimes or very intelligent also 
but then their sons, their daughters, they end up wasting everything. They ruin the lives of their parents and their own lives also. So that is like saying their, their Navamsha Lagna's Lord is not very strong, which means their Navamsha Lagna is indicating to them that whatever you have already, if that Jupiter is not well placed in the Navamsha, then you it will be, it will be very difficult for you to uh, maintain what you have got from your family or any kind of skill which you have got from your past lives okay now suppose this jupiter is well placed in the d1 chart so who is jupiter the ascendant lord of the navamsha chart so you saw that he is uh, badly placed in the d9 okay then you see where is this Jupiter in the uh, D1 chart. Okay. So that will tell you uh, to what extent by your free will you can try to preserve what you are losing. Because in Navamsha we assume this Jupiter is not well placed. Okay. So then now suppose um, your Jupiter is very well placed in D1. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that although circumstantially you, you will end up losing so many things. Okay, So suppose you have a lot of wealth from your family. Then if this Jupiter is badly placed in the Navamsha, then what can happen? But if it is well placed in D1, okay, what does it mean? This means that you yourself may not be responsible for that loss of wealth. But due to some other factors, somebody cheated you or you know, it can be anything. There was some natural disaster or somebody died or because of some other reason. You are not able to maintain that wealth but you yourself are not responsible and because it is well placed in the D1. Therefore, when you try to get that wealth back, then you are successful. So, then you know that although this Jupiter is badly placed in my Navamsha, so I am losing a lot of things somehow. But by my own efforts, by my free will, I can to some extent nullify those problems and I can bring back the things that I lose in this life. Okay. So, therefore, in that case, you have to check uh, which dashas you are running. So, for example, if you are running Jupiter Mahadasha or Jupiter Antardasha, now dashas will be judged from the Lagna chart. Okay. No, there is no question of Navamsha there. So then in that case, you will see that, okay, my Jupiter Mahadasha is running. So in that case, what could happen if Jupiter is well placed in your Lagna chart, being the Lagna, being the Lagna Lord of your Navamsha chart, okay. Then it could happen that there could be major financial or uh, any loss of any kind of a resource that this Jupiter uh, indicates because of its poor placement in the D9. But then if because maybe Jupiter is in the 11th house in your Lagna chart or maybe it's in trines or maybe it's in the Lagna in Big Bar or it's in exhortation. Then you try, try, try and then you can resist that loss or you can get back that loss which you had. Okay. So then in that case, you know that this Jupiter uh, is having the power to um, you know, uh, override what the Navamsha is saying because it is well placed in the D1. Okay. And for Mercury, as we said, now if we see that Mercury as the Lagna Lord is poorly placed in the, in the Lagna chart. Now who, is, who was Mercury? Mercury was the Lagna Lord of the na, Lagna chart, D1. Ascendant Lord of D1. So then, suppose Mercury is poorly placed in your D1 chart. And then Mercury is very well placed in your D9 chart. Okay. So then what does it mean? Then it means that you already have a lot of things when it comes to Mercury. Your speaking abilities and your uh, abilities to uh, fathom information, knowledge and you know explain it to others, communication skills finance especially that is inherently very good because this mercury is well placed in the navamsha chart that is by destiny by your goodwill by the blessings of lord vishnu you are having that 
but because it is badly placed in this lagna chart therefore you somehow waste a lot of those resources even if you are very good at it but you don't use it like I remember in my school days, uh, there were many of my schoolmates, friends, who the teachers used to say, oh, this student is, well, is very brilliant. He's extraordinary. She's super brilliant. But what is the problem? That person never studies. <laughs> so it is like saying, if you study, you can do very good. But if you don't study, then you will... Uh, not do good in your studies or exams so that does that that has nothing to do with how much intelligent you are so if you don't study then uh, you are going to have a tough time with your education all right so in that case we know that the whatever the navamsha is saying although that is there but the lagna chart is not able to manifest that result externally okay because the person is not studying, the person is not putting efforts. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to check uh, sun and moon. So sun, you check in your Lagna chart and then in Navamsha. Then you check moon in your Lagna chart and in, in your Navamsha chart. So if you see that sun and moon are relatively well placed in the Navamsha chart, then in your Lagna chart, then you know that although there are a lot of difficulties when it comes to D1. The Navamsha is kind of protecting that person because of his good deeds. So in that case, even if the person has a lot of difficulties externally, you, you, will, you can see that this person is somehow able to carry on through all of these problems. Okay? And the person is coming out, evolving out as a better individual, as a better human being. Why that is? Because the sun and moon uh, in the Ramamsha specially shows uh, blessings of Lord Ram and Lord Krishna. So they might have done some great spiritual activities pertaining to Krishna or Ram and because of which they have been blessed profusely that, okay, you can't do this, but at least I will give you an opportunity. Lord Vishnu is saying, I will give you an opportunity because you did these, these, these things. I am now giving you the opportunity. It is up to you. You want to use it or not. And if it is well placed in the Lagna chart, sun and moon, then the person will utilize all his resources in a good way. Okay, but if it is not, then the person will not utilize. Okay. So you have to judge like this. Then you will know uh, how, how we can understand which chart will be more prominent. Okay. But some, you will never get charts like this because that's how life is, that's how astrology is, it's very complicated. You will always see that somebody's sun is well placed in the Lagna chart and debilitated or in the 8th house in Navamsha. And somebody's moon is in the 8th house of Navamsha or, or sorry, it can be the other way around. You know, moon can be strong in one and weak in the other or the lagnesh of d1 can be strong in the in the lagna and weak in d9 and the lagnesh of d9 can be maybe weak in d9 and strong in the d1 okay so primarily you analyze these three plan these four planets okay the lagna lords of both of these charts and you analyze the sun and moon so by that you will get a better clue about what is going to happen and to what extent will the Navamsha chart hold more power than the Lagna chart? Okay. Because we should not just blindly jump into conclusion. So now, suppose let us conclude, let us assume that in one chart, overall you understand by the position of these four planets that the Navamsha chart seems to be more prominent. Okay. Then that, that defines how you should read the other planets. Which means, suppose mm, you need to read the position of uh, Rahu, okay? Then you you have to first judge. Uh, suppose you want to know, will Rahu listen to more of the D9 position or the D1 position? Then you have to judge first these four planets, which I told you, okay? 
Now suppose the conclusion after these four planets is that okay the D9 is relatively stronger. But now what happens if Rahu is weaker in the D9 and he is very strong in the D1? Okay. So that is like a clash. Then you have to see which planets are helping Rahu, which planets are um, which planets are trying to take away Rahu's energy. Okay. Where Rahu is placed, which house does it rule? Because Rahu uh, not rule, sorry, which house it is sitting and Rahu gives results of dispositors and the planets which aspect Rahu also, okay, not which Rahu aspect, those which aspect Rahu. So, and same for Ketu also. So, you have to then judge individually, but that is the second step. First step is you judge these four planets, okay. So, then you will know how every planet is behaving because once you decide which chart is relatively more stronger then you know the pool is on that side if it is d9 then the pool is on that side okay so then now suppose the good thing is if you see they they say this you know nicha bhanga so they say if a planet is uh, nicha in lagna and exalted in navamsa the nicha is can the nicha is uh, the debility is cancelled. So that's like niche panga. They say like this. But it does not mean on a literal sense that the debility gets cancelled. So now suppose somebody's Venus is in debility in D1 and it is exalted in D9. So in this case, if the Navamsha is more powerful, then this debilitated Venus, it can't, it can't do much harm because now we understood the Navamsha is more prominent. And therefore, the, the blessings of this exalted Venus will be 10 times more than the curses or the negativity of this debilitated Venus. But suppose you understand the D1 chart is more powerful. Then if you have a debilitated planet like Venus, then you know that debility is really serious. Because now, the Navamsha is not able to override the Lagna chart. Okay, then this debility will hold true irrespective of what is there. Now, I'm just giving an example. Okay, because um, for example, uh, moon which is, moon is in Scorpio. Okay, so moon moon in Scorpio in the Lagna can also be in Scorpio in the Navamsha. Okay, because of the calculation. But sometimes it can happen that if a planet is deb debilitated it cannot be debilitated also in the navamsha okay then that that is a very long calculation i will not explain maybe some other time or sometimes it cannot happen that uh, a planet is exalted and is debilitated or it is exalted in both okay or it can happen also sometimes so that is a different uh, technical chapter when it can be when it cannot be but let us assume that one is exalted, one is debilitated, because most of the questions are pertaining to these areas only. All right. So once you know these things, then you understand how you should start studying the planets. Otherwise, uh, you will just read horoscopes and you will have absolutely no idea what is going on. And then you ask the person, no, oh, Jupiter is in your 10th house in Lagna chart and you are having defamy. How in the universe is that possible? Because of two reasons. Maybe the Navamsha is more powerful and Jupiter is very badly smashed in the D1. So now what is happening? His defame is not coming from D1. It's coming from the D9. And because it is well placed in the D1, he is trying his best to overcome that defame. But that also you have to kind of judge. Will he be able to overcome or not? You know, there are many other factors which you have to judge. Which... I can keep speaking, I can go on and on speaking, but it's like a never-ending stuff, all right? So just these four planets and then decide which is more powerful. That is all from my side. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with those who are interested to know about D1 versus D9, D9 versus D1, okay? And if you want a consultation from me, you can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Thank you very much.